On today's episode of Locked on Coyotes, we examine the fallout more of uh, Monday's game. Plus, we t- also take a look at uh, some players from the Arizona Coyotes inching closer to their return back onto the ice. And, of course, we, t- we again, as we normally do in the last couple of weeks, take a look at some former Coyotes players. See what they're doing with their new teams. All on today's episode with Robin and Kyle. Locked On Coyotes, your daily podcast on the Arizona Coyotes, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the show, everyone. I'm Robin Leon. Your Carl Pavlik is right to the next to me if you're watching a video um, or maybe just hear, hearing right next to me based off just audio. But we're back onto the podcast. Um, happy Wednesday now. Uh, I hope you guys uh, were able to take a little bit of digest that loss to St. Louis, the home opening loss. I know it wasn't great, but uh, um, unfortunately, we had to talk more about it, but in a different way, uh, just a little bit of extra things that we have to address of uh, things that lasted after that. Uh but first, of course, let's check in with uh, with with Carl. How you doing? How was the last twenty four hours for you? Have you recovered from the loss? Uh, I've been good. I, I was kind of anticipating the 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 loss. Uh, I steeled myself against it, so not too much recovery time needed. Uh, just uh, finished beating Metroid Dread, the new uh, Nintendo game. Really fun. Uh, if you've read reports that it's really hard, and you've played any kind of like 2D platformer Metroidvania game in the past year, it's not that hard. So check it out; it's a lot of fun. Awesome. I mean, good, good that uh, we have people being able to recover pretty easily. Um, yeah. I, just, I mean, I, mean, I know we were, we were talking about this before. I slept all, a lot of the day. Um, maybe because the Coyotes game. Maybe because everything else. I had a long weekend, a long last week, to be mm-hmm. honest. So. I mean, it, it was definitely an emotional roller coaster on Monday. Um, the Coyotes looked to be doing really well and then just completely fell apart for five minutes. Uh, those kind of games kind of stick with you. And, and the fact that we immediately did a, um, a post game um, afterwards, like, eh. Like, I didn't get to sleep until like midnight, I think. So I can I can appreciate being tired all day. Yeah, it was definitely something else. Um, but glad I got my rest. Now I, I, I'm feeling great today. Um, at least like I feel more well rested. Let's see how I feel tomorrow or <laughs> now today, based off what you guys are listening. But yeah. uh, and then uh, and then we got Edmonton coming up, so got a whole Friday to feel uh, and, feel yeah, drained yeah. again. Oh, not only that, I'm not sure if you know, I work at like 4 a.m. on Friday. So. Oh. <laughs> Uh, and driving back from Glendale to Phoenix, I mean to Tucson. Oh boy! Yeah, uh, it, it's um, like I think we we've said it a lot, but there's going to be a lot of pain this year. Um, and in general, hockey comes with just like a level of like having to do stuff and being tired. Um, anytime like I'm talking to someone from the East Coast, they're like, "Why are your games on at 10 p.m.?" And I was like, "Well, you know." time change all of that kind of fun stuff but it's it's really tiring being a, a coyotes media person any kind of sports media person uh it's equal or it's not as tiring but almost as tiring being a fan i think it's something that like everyone can kind of appreciate you don't always sleep the best during hockey season no not one bit but let's go ahead and continue our um our coverage of uh, somewhat post game coverage of the last game, a couple other, um, just co- I mean, just really mainly one house cleaning item that we have to t- discuss. Uh, I woke up this morning, Carl, to a um, a tweet. I have um, notifications, automatic notifications, um, popped up for from NHL player safety, and uh, they said that uh, Pavel Buchnevich was going to get a hearing, and obviously we'll talk, we'll we'll talk about the uh decision in just a second about his headbutting of um, Lawson Krausen obviously he got a match penalty so this was 
you know, it, it, it was bound to come because that's uh, match penalty automatically comes with the hearing the next day. Yeah. I mean, especially for like an instance like headbutting, which we so rarely see in the NHL. I think everyone was anticipating there be something. Uh, we got the notification early on that he was going to have the hearing and it didn't take him long to come to a decision. No, it did not take long to come to a decision. Um, this uh, just yesterday evening. NHL player safety goes heads and posts that Pavel Buchnevich will be suspended for two games um, for the uh, for the headbutting. Which, if you pay attention to how headbutting is, is the standard just about the standard for non-repeating offenders. Obviously. Although he is a repeat offender, but like you know what I mean. Like we're yeah. we're talking we're talking like Tom Wilson <laughs> repeating yeah. offender like. It's definitely like a thing where um, we don't see a lot of headbutting in the NHL, so we don't see too many of these suspe- suspensions. I don't think anyone was anticipating something like exponentially longer. No, um, I think most people on Twitter are kind of like mm, two games. It's fine. Like it, it is kind of weird because no one was hurt, but it's also just one of the the things you see in hockey where you're like. That's extremely dumb and dangerous. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Why are we only having two games? So I can kind of see there being like a case for there being more just to like eliminate this kind of behavior. But, you know, I think it, it was an appropriate suspension. I don't think too many people are complaining about it. Um, I, I saw some people annoyed that like Lawson Krauss didn't get anything for the cross check that preceded it besides the the penalty in game, I don't think that was, you know, warranted him getting no. suspended. It was a cross check to the chest. Um, and someone briefly mentioned that Jacob Jekran getting in the fight with neighbors, like at the end, like that may have gotten something just because, you know, it's a pretty big thing. But eh, again, that was, I thought those were kind of weak. There was like no real animosity for, for this one. Uh, again, and supplemental discipline that really goes based like, you know, Obviously, I don't know all the criteria. I don't think anyone really knows the criteria for NHL player safety. But for the most part, absolutely not. No. But for the most part, like most of what they look like look at is is it reckless? Is it dumb? Is it dangerous? Is it uh, what the last what, what would be the last one? Is, is it uh? I do believe injuries are somewhat taken into account. Yeah. Was there I'm, intent to injure? That's the other one. Intent, was there intent injury. to injure? Yeah. Like those are <laughs> those are the main things taking into effect. And obviously there was some intent to injure, and they just get oh game misconduct, and they're fine after that. But yeah. Like, but um, in this case, you know, there are a couple fact like in the Buchnevich when there were a couple factors, and and that's the reason why it was something as low as two games, which. Again, you and I were like, okay, there was no really true intent to injure. Like Lawson Krauss was able to get up, but still, yeah. but like it was, it was still a, a dangerous play because he could have well gotten injured either way. Yeah, it was a dangerous play. It was a dumb play. Like I said, I don't like if I went the entire season without seeing a headbutting penalty, I'd be fine. Uh, like I don't think that that is something that should be in the NHL, um, but. I, I guess everything worked out okay with this one. And the league is actually sending a message where they're saying like, no, we have video on this and you can't do something like this. Uh, I think a lot of people, what a lot of people find frustrating about the NHL is that there's not a lot of consistency in punishments. And I think that's a bit uh, hyperbolic because I think when there's something that happens and we're in like a Twitter thread or like a Slack channel, like talking about it. In my experience, people seem to have a pretty good like idea of what the suspension is going to be. And they tend to be pretty accurate. Like you can kind of predict what suspensions are if you pay enough attention. Um, And this one just seemed to be like a no brainer for the NHL. Like I'm sure they weren't happy to get it, but they were like, Oh, this is an easy one. We know how to make this work and no one's going to yell at us. And yeah. I mean, cool. I'm fine with the player safety making those easy calls correctly and just being like solid double. Just being like, yep, we did our job right. Uh, 
we'll do something controversial next week, but for now, we know what we're doing. Isn't it a sigh of relief to have NHL player safety do something right for once? <laughs> I mean, yeah. at least make some, at least show a little bit of consistency in a call like that. Like, absolutely. Um, if if you were the type of person who has complaints about player safety, um, and you're a Coyotes fan, I think that this decision should make you feel very happy. If you have those problems as a Blues fan, um, you won the game and your guy headbutted someone. Shut up. I don't <laughs> care what you think. Um, like, honestly, like, um, if, if you thought the suspension was too tough and you are a St. Louis Blues fan, uh, you're wrong. It's two games and it's headbutting and there's yeah. clear video of him doing it. Yeah. It doesn't matter that it was to Lawson Krause's chin because he's a giant. Uh, you're not supposed to headbutt people. Again, yeah, because it is dangerous, especially – I think even that, even a, even to your chin, that's even more dangerous because that can that that can cause some crazy injury. Yeah, like you could you could break like you know potentially something in the in the facial area, like your teeth are right there, uh, so that could cause some issues. Um, yeah, there's there's a lot of problems with headbutting in any in any place, um, and it just it shouldn't happen. Um, but yeah. He's going to get a, a chance to rest for a couple games. We were talking about it earlier and how how busy and hectic the season is going to be. He's got two games in the press box to, to kind of relax and, you know, take things in. And Absolutely. And again, um, both based on what we were saying, guys, both Carl and I do think that, that two games is fair. And we have nothing to complain about. Yeah. Yeah. Um. If you think it was uh, if it was too lenient, like definitely let us know. Tweet at us. Um, I I haven't seen those reactions yet. I'd be curious if there's anyone who does think it was too lenient or too tough. Um, it definitely let us know if the um, if you'd rather something different happened. Uh, this honestly seems like a no brainer for me though. Yeah, um, I'm looking at the I'm looking at the Twitter stream of of, of most of the things. It seems yeah, everyone else is on the same consensus as us. That yeah. uh, this was a fair and uh, well doled out punishment to Pavel Butnevich. Yep. yep. And, and it's nice when everyone's kind of able to come together and be like, no, we all agree this is bad and this is an appropriate punishment. Like, so rarely the NHL is such a fast game and it's such a game that I don't think anyone has like one idea of what the NHL should be. There's like each person has their own idea of how tough it should be and what things should be allowed like you talk to old school people who are like yeah that's fine like the problem right. is he was wearing the helmet like if they just let him wear like no helmets uh again it'd be fine with headbutting and you're like what no um but but yeah no very rarely do we get the the consensus uh discipline and i think we should be happy when we do absolutely hey but we still do have more to talk to on this episode of locked on coyotes up next, we are going to uh, talk about some uh, some roster players, some that uh, did not start the game the season with the Eagles and the Coyotes, and are inching closer to a return off of injury. We'll find out who those players are coming up in just a sec. But first, I want to tell you guys about Built Bar, the best tasting protein bar in the land. Did you know that Built Bar has so many delicious flavors? There is absolutely someone something for everyone. Ranging from coconut to mint brownie, double chocolate, cookies and cream, German chocolate, a lot of different stuff. I went ahead and tried a recent flavor of it. They um, have a little time during this October called Paranormal Pumpkin. It's one of those one of their puff flavors, and my God, it's absolutely phenomenal. I really, really like it. Um, and here's the the really fun thing about Built Bar is that they are not only the best tasting out there, but they are also healthy as well. 17, 18 grams of protein, 130, 180 calories, only four to five grams of sugar, and only four to five grams net carbs. It's amazing flavors, all tasty, all healthy. And if you guys go to built.com and use the promo code LOCKED15, you get 15% off your order. Once again, use the promo code LOCKED15 for 15% off at built.com. And now let's talk about uh, some different, some roster players who are coming back from injury, Carl. And I mean, obviously, we wouldn't say necessarily coming back from injury, inching closer to return from injury. They are still considered week to week 
and yeah. um, still on the like injured reserve. But these two team, these two players started skating. And yes, we are talking about Alex Galchenyuk and Kyle Kaiwabianco. Um, let me ask you this: um, based off the timetable, and obviously knowing that they're week to week and they're getting closer. How important is it to have these players back eventually? At least back on the ice at this point, like for for practicing at least. Uh, it's good to have them back on the ice. I, I think both players have a lot to prove. Um, Galchenyuk get, definitely gets a lot more attention because he has been in the NHL for longer. But this is a very important season for Capo Bianco. Right. Uh, I first saw the report by uh, Arizona Republic's Jose Romero. I just kind of want to give him credit for reporting that they were the ones practicing uh, today. I, especially with a team having problems scoring consistently, uh, I would like to see Alex Galchenyuk back as soon as possible. I think Victor Soderstrom is making it very difficult uh, for Kyle Capobianco to have a future with the team. Mm -hmm. And so he needs to return as quickly as possible (laughs) too uh, before he gets completely eclipsed. I did not think that we would see uh, Provenov sent down before he had a chance to play in the NHL because Soderstrom is just getting all of his games. I mean, Soderstrom's looking; he's he's been looking pretty good. You know, he you know he's fi- yeah. he's finding good pairings and um and the pairs he does get with with in, in the NHL for the Coyotes. And you know, that's a good that's definitely a good thing for him, a good thing for the future of the Coyotes. But at the same time, like you said, for Kyle Capobianco, does not spell a lot of good news for him. But no. with Provenev down, it does give Capobianco another opportunity. Yeah. Uh, and, and it basically makes him the, the seventh defenseman when he's ready to come back. We're not mm-hmm. sure when that's going to be. Uh, and that's not a bad spot for him to be at um, at this stage in his career. Um, especially like if, if, he, if he could find a good like rotation spot. And he's become like a full NHL defenseman. Like if he's here the entire season, like that's good for um, you know the Coyotes if they decide to keep him. Um, it's good for his career if he elects to go someplace else. If he's had that NHL experience, um, and um, honestly, like we may with him being injured, we could also see him return to uh, the Tucson Roadrunners on a conditioning uh, stint. Yeah, so. Like that's something that would have been unavailable for him because he of his age and his contract. And he's just, just know no, that just know the conditioning stands only last like a week long. So. Yeah. So it would definitely be like a short term thing in there, but you know, the team isn't able to really send him to Tucson without having to deal with waivers. So, um, Speaking of Tucson, too, um, I got we probably should mention that when when the uh, the Kyries did decide to send down Provena, they had to make obviously a corresponding move, and that was the call up of Dyson Mayo, um, mm. which is an interesting one to me. Um, he's kind of they, he, he's usually just one of those extra players you kind of just throw in there. <laughs> yeah, um, but I, that kind of once makes me wonder, like what Capo Bianco's timetable is and what they're needing that extra player for. If they just need like a warm body at practice, um, that could maybe speak to him being ready to return sooner. Um, Dyson Mayo is, is one of those players who um, he always seems to go up and down. He always mm-hmm. seems to draw in for a couple games, like maybe not good enough to be an NHL regular, but you know, neat can be useful in a pinch. Um, can't, I'd, l- I'd like to see more from him. I don't think at this point that he has maybe a long-term future with the with the, with the Coyotes. No. Maybe with the Roadrunners if he's comfortable there. Maybe someplace else. But eh, maybe he gets a shot and and impresses. Like I think everyone's trying to find uh, like another version of someone we're going to talk about soon. Uh, Michael Bunting, a player who just came up from the Roadrunners after years and just kind of put things together and like. It all kind of fell into peace, into into place. I know that happens like in everyone else's life, where you're in your mid twenties, you're like, oh, suddenly things make a little bit more sense. Uh, yeah. And unfortunately, it doesn't happen as much with hockey players, just because. I mean, that's not how being an athlete works, unfortunately. No. Yeah, uh, no, not usually. It, there are a few exceptions, um, but exceptions not the rule. 
Exactly. But uh, yeah, again, anyways, uh, Kyle Kapo, Bianco, and Alex Galchenyuk are inching closer to return back on the ice for skating. Um, still designated once again as week to week, as what Carl said, reported by Jose Romero of the Arizona Republic. Um, but again, that's that, that, that's as much as we can tell you. That's as much of analysis we can give you until we know more. Coming up in later uh, in the last segment of this podcast, we'll talk some former Coyotes players, guys who uh, were literally just around barely even a year ago and how they're doing with the new teams. Because I know a lot of you guys still have an emotional attachment to some guys. Um, so we'll give you updates, see how they're doing. All that coming up in just a moment. But first... We're back and better than ever. A new web interface from the start of basketball season and more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all basketball and football and hockey action this season. Head to our new updated desktop or mobile websites to sign up today and receive your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Uh, just use our promo code LOCKEDON to receive your bonus from basketball, football, baseball, postseason, uh, baseball postseason, NHL, boxing, and UFC, right down to your favorite Vegas casino games. Don't wait to take advantage of all the amazing offers available for the 2021 season. Bet online is the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite sports. Bet online, where the game starts. Okay, so back here on Lockdown Coyotes, once again, Robin Leonio and Carl Pavlak as we discuss uh, some of the latest Coyotes news. And, uh, you know, usually what we like to do every now and then is uh, take a little update on what's going on with some former players, uh, where they are with the new teams, maybe like, you know, a couple times in the offseason we talked about retired players, what they're doing now. Um, this yeah. time we'll talk about quite a few, yeah, there's an extensive list of players who are doing some good stuff with their, uh, with their former teams. Carl, you have a list of people you wanted to talk about. I do, yes. Um, since the Coyotes just completely blew up their team uh, this past year and sent away anyone with who was worth anything to, you know, other teams in exchange for picks, we have a lot of active players, more so than we would have in any other year. Um, and I kind of want to start with uh, two of the bigger names to go: Connor Garland and OEO. Uh, both are with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, Garland having a pretty good start. One goal and two assists in three games. OEL, solid start by himself. Goal and assist in three games. Uh, honestly, both are performing pretty well. Uh, there was a bit of speculation. OEL looked really drained in the Vancouver Canucks bag skate during training camp. And that kind of led people to be like, oh, he's not the player he is anymore. But... Yeah, it's a short sample, but he seems to be finding like that offensive flair that he had in his best seasons in Arizona, and that could serve him well in Vancouver. And Garland, proven that like he's not just uh, I was gonna say he wasn't benefiting from the Coyotes' offense, but those words don't make any sense together. <laughs> so yeah, Garland has nothing to prove, um, and he's just playing well. That's what that's what's good to hear. You know, you always love hearing um, former players who, you know, you, you especially for someone like me, especially like Garland, because you know, like I've watched him grow up in Tucson and then go up be the superstar he was in Arizona, and yeah. to be able to continue it in another team, it's just like you know what, I love to hear it. Yeah, especially like when you look at players, they didn't leave uh, as free agents, they didn't force a trade, like by all like. By all appearances, it sounded like they probably wanted to be with the Coyotes Nick, or this season. Maybe not OEL. Uh, he seemed right. to be comfortable going. I don't think Garland was really anticipating leaving the franchise. Um, so it's great that they're doing well. Uh, I wish them the best. Personally, like as an OEL fan from from way back, I would love to see him regain his form. I think he got a lot of crap the past couple of years. I think he wasn't in a system that utilized him the best. I think he dealt with a lot of personal issues off the ice that would impact anyone's play. Um, and yeah, I, I hope they both do well and I could like just go and win Twitter arguments now and be like, yeah. ha, 
four years ago, you yelled this at about OEL to me. Now I have the receipts. He's doing well in Vancouver. I'm not going to do that. Um, but I could if he does. And that'd be nice. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, one player that I want to talk about. I know you probably have a couple more you want to talk about. One player I want to talk about. Former Coyote player. More than former Tucson Roadrunner. He, I mean, he also played a lot in Glendale as well. Aiden Hill, goaltender. Now... This it seems like the pseudo starter for the San Jose Sharks. Yeah, I was um, wondering about that. Like, is he a starter? Is it a tandem? I mean, he started two and two, two straight. Um, because that's a, <laughs> and you know, obviously helped help the San Jose Sharks go for two zero start. Um, looking at this in two games, a one five zero goal uh, goals against average, a nine three two save percentage, and one shutout, including. Yesterday against the Montreal Canadiens. I mean, it's Montreal. We're not doing well, but still. Um, yeah, Montreal is really doing badly. Uh, <laughs> yeah. They've lo- they lost to Aiden Hill, starting goaltender for the San Jose Sharks, and the Buffalo Sabres just canceled their season. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, you're, you're defending Western Conference champions, Montreal Canadiens. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> uh it's great that hill i i honestly saw him as like a goaltending like feature for the coyotes i understand why they moved him the way mm-hmm. they did uh it'll be interesting to see if he can keep this up and be a starter uh i i have seen people mention his like 11 games straight starting for the coyotes it shows he's uh, an iron man yeah that's a good thing it's well, like it was, it was funny because like people were like, "Yeah, we've shown that Hill could do that. Uh, he could start all those games." And I was like, "A, he didn't have a great record during those games. B, he shouldn't have started all those games." So it's a bad example to take from. But yeah, it's well, good. The, the example you can take out of it is that he has the uh, what do you call it. He has the stamina uh, to do it. You shouldn't stamina. do it, but he has yeah. the stamina to do it. Yeah. Um, Let's uh let's go for another Coyotes goaltender. Not having as good a record, Darcy Kemper, one one and zero for the uh, Colorado Avalanche, three point oh nine goals against average, point nine oh two save percentage. Yeah, pretty good. Decent. He's doing all right. I mean, here's the thing, and I I, I made I made the tweet about it on Twitter just the other night. Is the Avalanche aren't exactly helping? Kemper either like yeah. it's like does it is this like a trend where the team that has Darcy Kemper just seems to forget how to you know, defense well I mean let's say this uh Colorado is missing some key pieces um so we're not really fully evaluating their team as no. best they can it's a uh, joke it really is but like yeah. it, I'm just making it just to kind of like you know point fun yeah. and just like what what what's going on it, it is really funny though uh, I do also think that, like, if you are the Colorado Avalanche, you don't need to have too many shutouts. Like, you're no. gonna win those games. You can, like, you can have a 3.09 goals against average because you're gonna outscore that uh, in, in pretty much any given game. Like, I do think there's that's the biggest difference between the um, you know Hill and the Sharks and Kemper with the Avalanche. Like, they have a lot more wiggle room, so they don't need to be as tight. Um, exactly. And then uh, just to kind of go down the list, uh, one that we talked about earlier, so definitely need to make sure to bring him up, Michael Bunting, Toronto Maple Leafs, 2-1-3 and three start in four games. Really good there. Um, I thought the Coyotes' decision to not sign him potentially made sense. Uh, the deal he got with, with Toronto was, was really good, so we probably could have gotten him for that. But, you know, he came in, he had a hot, like, couple games with a team that's not exactly someone you want to bank on and i don't remember him being like a, a significant piece of the road runners like i saw someone mention like as like an indictment of john chaka that michael bunting like just languished in the ahl for so long but like, he was the road runner's all-time leading scorer sure but like... but he he wasn't Connor that's Garland. Testi- I mean, that's a testament to how long he was in Tucson, really, rather than how yeah. well he played. I mean, he still played well in Tucson, but that would also be real. This is the American Hockey League. He never translated. Yeah. yeah. But, I mean, 
Hey, it's great that he's finding success like late in life. Um, he's with his hometown team, and that'll mm-hmm. definitely motivate you. Uh, and then we just got two more players, not necessarily as great a start. Uh, Christian Dvorak, 0-1-1 one, and one in three games. I think a lot of that is just he's playing for Montreal, so clearly they're having problems. And Alex Golgoski went back to his hometown team of the Minnesota Wild. No points, two games. Um, I think he still has something in him this year. I'm not sure what it's going to be. Um, let's kind of, he'll be a, an interesting player to watch in a Minnesota wild team that I don't know really how to think about just yet. Yeah. It's going to be in Minnesota is, 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 is a team we can't really completely dive into. It's, it's an interesting one. I mean, there were, I mean, Goligoski has shown some promise. I, mean, I saw some of his players during preseason, but again, that's preseason. You can only take so much out of it, yeah. but still. There's still, there's still stuff there. Yeah, I thought he played really well with Jacob Chikrin. Um I actually would have been in favor with the Coyotes bringing him back for another year, like at a you know a fairly minor deal. That ended up not happen- happening. I'm fine with the the def. I'm maybe going to be less fine with the defense that we have moving forward, but um, uh, I think um, he could potentially do some good things. He's uh, he's getting up there, but he's still got plenty of. Uh, Plenty of games left to play. Absolutely. Um, I think that rounds out, yeah, just about the, all the you know former players we wanted to talk about. Again, some good, some average, some not so good. But, like, I... again, it's the first less than a week of the season. Yeah, You can only really take so much out of it. But, again, you know, it's fun watching some of the former players. Um, and again, and especially for someone like me, um, watching – Aiden Hill play for my hometown team. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, that's pretty cool, especially because, again, because I watched him play in Tucson. I'm like, ah, he's playing for my hometown now. Um, <laughs> so stuff like that is pretty cool. But, you know, for the Coyotes fans, I know it probably sucks to see some of these players doing so well um, yeah. because you're just like, you're looking at how the team, how the Coyotes are right now, and you're like, oh, they're so bad. <laughs> Yeah, like uh, we probably could have used some of the the goal scoring of Connor Garland uh, or a Michael Bunting this year, but I mean, if or, you're thinking or the long of Darcy Kemper or Aiden or, Hill, yeah. But if you're also thinking long term, like players doing well, like those are the players that you need to send out um, because that is how you get a high draft pick. You do not have players who are who are overplaying. Um, I mean, look at it. Let's see. Uh, uh, Garland, OEL, uh, Kemper, and Hill brought brought over two first round picks and a second round pick in next year's draft. Like, that's a a, a pretty significant haul. They uh they helped the Coyotes one last time in in netting like a good return and, and jump starting a rebuild. And I really like it. The amount that the coyotes were blown up and how quickly i think it's going to lead to them like going through that rebuild is astonishing um in the meantime i just hope that uh all these guys like have good careers and, and you know keep at it heck uh, maybe a couple like four or five years from now team decides to bring garland back to the to the team that drafted him decides to bring dvorak back to be a veteran on a on a on a freshly restocked team we don't know, um, but these guys still have like a lot left in their careers, and we can potentially see them come around. Um, in the meantime, they just gotta stay good and keep getting their money. Exactly, exactly. Hey, we're just about running out of time now for this epi- episode of Locked On Coyotes. Hope you guys like what you heard. If you did, don't forget to leave a review, a like, a comment, depending on where you're listening. We are available everywhere you get your podcasts now, including on YouTube. Um, Again, you can don't don't forget to subscribe if you yet to already. Interact with us, interact with us on social media. We are at L O underscore Coyotes. I'm personally at Rob on your one. Carl Pavlik is that Carl Pavlik F F H. Um, interact with us, ask us a question. We can answer them on a future episode of the Locked On Coyotes podcast. Um, as well as a reminder, guys, be sure to uh, tune in tomorrow morning. We will have the uh, the pregame show for the uh, Arizona Coyotes versus the Edmonton Oilers. They'd be hosting Connor McDavid and the Oilers on, 
on Thursday night, followed by much, much later that night. Um, won't do, it won't be as fresh, but still later that night, we will have our um, post game show as well. Because, um, well, I'll, I'll be, I'll be there uh, recording live from Gila River Arena. All that coming up. So be sure to stay tuned. Um, and again, if you don't want to, if you want to know when they are available, again, don't forget to subscribe. Anyways, thanks again, everyone, for listening to today's episode. Hope you guys are staying safe out there. Hope you guys are staying healthy. And don't forget to howl on.